Hello, my friends. <laughs> As you see, I've got a new studio. I sold some equipment here at the shop, confiscated one of the rooms to make a studio, man cave, office, but it's my little space. And uh, I have two things that I want to talk about. I'm not going to do a review, but one thing was this um, Helinox Zero Chair. It also, I also have the ground sheet in there and the Trekology Yeezy Go camping chair, and it also has the ground sheet. But before I get into what I want to say about these two, I had some housekeeping I needed to do. First, I exchanged some um, stickers with some YouTubers. First one is this guy here, the Unpaved Explorer, John Coffey, and I'm going to stick him right here. And then I've got Brad from As the Crow Flies Hiking. And we're going to stick him right here. And then I got Tony from Blue Collar Back Country. Actually, actually, I have two. He sent me this one, and he sent me this one. So we're going to stick him up there too. right here, and here. Okay, hi, Max, you still up there? <laughs> All right, with that out of the way, I've been meaning to point this out. This was sent to me by Sweeps, and I, I thought it was a snowman, but actually it says it's the original s'mores, s'mores, yeah, and uh, that was sent to me, which I appreciate. That came from Sweeps. Oh, her channel is Sweeps Section Hiking. The AT Section Hiking is one word. Now, the latest was this sent to me, um, Pat, from Country RD. And I'll type her channel up here, Country RD. But um, this is the two fanny packs. And uh, I watched I watched her make them. I'll, you can go to her link. She makes backpacks too, but um, oh, she has made a backpack. But I was looking at it. It's got a it's got a looks like a waterproof zipper, and the stitching is as good as any pro that you could see. See that stitching? You can see it. I don't. I think this material is waterproof, but I think she said the back wasn't water, waterproof. But she sent me two of them, two fanny packs. So I thought that was good. Thank you, Pat, for that. Okay, now let's get into the uh, trackology and the uh, zero. Now, I'm going to open these up. I'm not going to do a review, but I am going to tell you a few pros and cons that I like about each one of them. So I'll be right back with you as soon as I get them opened up. Okay, here they are, both open up. Both have the ground sheet. Pretty much the same chair. The difference is that uh, I can tell is this one is a pound, approximately one pound heavier than the um, Helinox Zero chair. One pound heavier. But there was a couple of things I did like about this Trekology. First was the price. You can buy two of these with the ground cloth for the price of one of these. Now, I don't know if that pound uh, means a lot to you. Also, this is a little bulkier than this one. But also this is a, to this part, let me see if I can, from the ground here is 11 inches. This one from the ground here is 16 inches, 16 inches, four or five inches difference, which could, could make or break it for you. I had this for a while and used it successfully and I like it. But if I was doing a through hike, I don't think I'd even take a chair. But my hikes are fairly short, one to three to five miles maximum. So taking a Hillinox one pound chair suits me fine. A two pound chair, if it's a longer hike, I don't think I'd be taking it. Even though I've sat in this, Tom Walker had um, one at the last, last time we were out and I got to sit in it. And I did like the height 
because getting up would be easier. Anybody under six foot, the Helinox sits fairly low to the ground. And um, whereas this was about four or five inches higher, it was easier to get out. I did like that. Plus it's a little more robust. These, these are a little more robust than the, but they both hold over 250 pounds, so we don't have that issue. But anyway, that's what I thought about these uh, chairs. Now, unless it's an extremely short hike, I will take this one. Yeah, let me give you the specs on it. Now, I'll put the links to these two chairs, Amazon link. You can check it out, get your own specifications. But the Helinox Zero chair weighs one pound, 49 ounces, or almost a pound, 0.5. The uh, Yazizi Go Camping Chair Trekology weighs two pounds, 0.5, uh, 2.5 pounds. So it's a basically a pound heavier. It's just according to how you feel. If you're a pack mule and don't mind hauling that extra pound, that's fine. Trekology would work for you. Okay, I'm on the Pine Mountain Overlook Loop with uh, Mike P. Hiker. And we got Kevin from Atypical Hiker with us. And uh, Mike, is a, his pace is much faster than mine and Kevin, so we'll catch up with him at the campsite. Now this Overlook Loop is 1.7 miles into the campsite and then tomorrow we got to go up and out uh, a 1.7 back to the parking lot. Now I've hauled in this Trekology seat. You see it on the top of my backpack and uh, when we get there I've got some camp duties set up the tent and this chair. He said duty. Uh, duty. Yeah, I said duty. <laughs> <laughs> camp duty. <laughs> but uh, that chair it, it weighs more than my empty backpack and almost as much as my Lanshan two-person tent. So it's a luxury item, but no farther than what we're going in. I'm going to give it a shot and see how much I like it. But um, I'll, I'll get cranked back up once we get to the campsite. <laughs> Kevin got his new 30-inch climate pad. He sent back. You bought one, what was it? I bought an eBay factory refurb. Refurb, and uh, after a few. And they gave a one year warranty on that. He well, sent it back. Well, better be the they sent him a brand new one. Look at this, it flips. Oh. Deflate, so it just, and inflate oh, on I this never side. Seen it like it I never saw that either. Hmm. So, inflate, and when you go to deflate it, it just, all of it will go out, I guess. Smart people. The problem is, the old one had the, um, but the valve is stuck up. What did they call him? I don't know. But, but apparently they all fail. Yeah. Uh, we had a fail on mine too, but I was able well, to. You glued yours. Yes. But see, I think since mine was a refurb, because they, they told me, they said, hey, just pull the old valve out and put some glue on it and stick it back in. Well, I couldn't pull the old valve out. So if they already glued it no. at the factory for the refurb, there wasn't no way I was ever getting it. If you watch out. my video, I couldn't pull it out either, but Mike, his 125 pounds got them out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried. I, I didn't want to tear the pad, so I just sent it back to him. And they sent him a brand new one, but they didn't send a new pump sack, so he's got to... Well, you he, got to pay for that. You got to blow it up now the old-fashioned so way. new fangled valve, we'll see how that works. But there's only one. You know, the other thing had two. One yeah, had, that's right. Mine's got two. I feel like sending mine back and getting... See if they're sending me a new one, but I've had it for five years. Well, here's the thing. Climate's pads have a lifetime warranty on them if you pay full price. You yeah. go on their website and find I paid, out. I paid full price. Yeah, if you pay full price, they give you a lifetime warranty. So, okay. yeah, you could send it back. Well, and get an upgrade. They send it back for well, what? I didn't get expect a... this. I expected they'd just send me another one with the two like I had. But yeah. they sent me their brand new. Well, start blowing on that. I'm going to see if it's okay, it, okay, without a pump sack, how, how long you, before you fall off that stool. Oh, going in pretty easy. Huh? Okay, it, I was thinking it'd be a little harder than that, but anyway, all right, look like you got it going. Good luck, Kevin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, got my new chair, hauled it in, and I uh, sure it's nice to have one when it's a short hike and you got friends. I got Kevin over there and Mike B. Hiker here to sit around a campfire or supper and you can sit in a chair and have some conversation that's really nice but like I said if we was on a multi-day long haul hike I wouldn't carry no chair I just 
hike all day, pitch a tent, fix supper, eat and go to bed, and then repeat the next day. Who needs a chair? But anyway, a while back, someone had wanted to know how I packed my bag. There's no secret, you just stuff it in there. But here lately, Mike P. Hiker come up with a system, and I watched him a few weeks ago, and it looked like it would appeal to me because he had two sacks. Mike, how, how much are those sacks? How many, how many liters? Eight liters. Huh? Eight liter zip bags. And he had like two compartments. So um, last week I did one, and uh, this week I've done two. And listen, I'm gonna show you. It, it seemed to make it a lot simpler because what I would do, I'd have what we call inside the tent, outside the tent. And instead of, instead of me sitting here pulling out one piece, oh, this goes inside. Pull out, this, oh, this goes outside. Instead of doing all that, I got these two sacks. Now I'm gonna show you, you just pull them out. Inside one, unzip your tent, throw it in, done. Outside one, pull it out, done. Anyway, let me show you. <laughs> Eight liter sacks. All right, and of course this is my thermal rest sleeping pad. I gotta blow it up. I can't blow it up till I empty and get this thermal rest pack line. I use it as a pack liner, but here we go. We pull out one. It's made by Granite Gear, by the way. They won't sell this, this, and there's lots of room. In fact, on the way here, I was thinking I could put my um, my battery pack in here, well, I, and many other things, but this is just the second time. So anyway, this is the inside. Bam, done. Outside, bam, done. You know, that's pretty quick. It used to take me a little while to figure out what goes in. See, now, now I can blow up, of course, my backpack goes in. Bam. All done. Except for blowing up my sleeping pad. And we're going to do that now. But anyway, that's. I'm still working on the um, in and out bag because there's many more things can go in in there. But anyway, that's that's all I had for you, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Oh, I love the chair. <laughs> we made it out when we got up this morning. I wasn't sure if Kevin wanted to come back to 1.7 miles the way we went in, or continue on the loop and um, face eight or nine switchbacks. He's done this before, so he knew the little short switchbacks, but if we'd have went that way, it once you finish the switchbacks, the climbing is over. The other mile and a quarter is just downhill. But for some reason, we chose to come back the way we came in. And it's a steady climb, not a mountain, but maybe three, four percent grade. And uh, <laughs> It was in the rain up until a few minutes ago. We stopped and took the poncho and the rain gear off. But now I feel it starting to rain again. But in any case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this camera around and catch Kevin coming out. And that, here he comes now. Kevin, next time, which way are we going? Does it matter? Don't matter. You're gonna, either way, you're going to do it, right? That's right. It'll hell look good. <laughs> yeah, it's all fixed. Okay. <laughs> Kevin is actually, Kevin is three hours away from Pine Mountain. Fortunately for him, my house is halfway, so he yep. comes, parks in my yard, and then, you know, then we go from my house to Pine Mountain, which is another hour and 20 minutes. Yep. But um, that's how it works. Anyway, he had his metal detector and thought he might check my yard for any treasures. Let's see, you think, think you found there. something? Right, see that? Yeah. I see I'm off of it already. So right there in the high tone. What do you think it is? Well this thing is saying it's probably a dime. Alright, you gonna dig it up? Yeah, I reckon so. Okay. Look at this kind of shovel. <laughs> Heck Kevin. Where to tell me where to put it. It's not here, not here, not here, not here, so it's right here. Right here? We're gonna dig a plug out right there. You say it's a dime? Ooh, look at this. Ooh. What does that mean? You got some gravel under there. 
special sh special shovel for metal detector people. I'm gonna get this plug out and then I'm gonna wave that detector over the plug and see if it's in the plug, which it should be. Because that's pretty deep. Now let's see. In the plug. Get the, you got your little handheld one, right? Now we go look for it. Where is it? It's real close to the surface, so it ain't gonna be too old. Probably gonna be a pull tab. What you think? A pull tab. What's pull a pull tab? Man, it's an old tops of them cans like they used to have. Oh, a little, oh yeah, a drink right. can or something where they pull yeah, the top off. More of those than anything. Let's see. There ain't nothing there. There's yeah, something there. I don't see nothing yet. It's in there. Let's hold, let me hold it for you. Ah. Uh, what? Pull tab? No, it's a it's one of those electrical box. It's that's oh. gonna be solid aluminum. That's why it rang up. So oh high. my goodness. Okay. No treasure. No treasure. What? 45, 46. 45, 46. What's that tell you? Pull tab. Probably some kind of junk. All right, we're gonna give up. He scanned my backyard, found nothing but junk. <laughs> but I'll post it. You guys might find it interesting. So see you next time.